Okay, start of another video and start of a winter turn here in Silver. Um, dealt out the cards and let's see, we had player ones over here. Purple Salt Lake City player. Cutting down, continuing his route to get to his mines in Lake City, South Fork, but also cut across to either Pueblo or Colorado Springs. Get those big passenger routes running. Whichever ones they choose. The Colorado Springs one doesn't kill the cards they currently have, I don't think. That's 21. And this dies on 22. They're picking this one up. And it dies on 20. And they've got a discount on this, right? No. They've got a discount for... When they get this, they get discounts. So, uh, that's a pretty cool setup. Uh, over to 2... And the game starts getting slower at this point just because each person has so many things they can do. Yes, they still only have a couple of tokens, but there's so many different options that they have to look at and branchings. Early on, you want to kind of stay near you. Green, so purple's move here uh, is threatening green directly. Their next move, they'll be able to split either into Hot Sulfur Springs or Steamboat Springs. They probably want Hot Sulfur more, and that's actually what green maybe should have defended but green wants to push forward if green had played here they could have defended both of them essentially but that's 120 bucks just wasted the only thing that would help them with is to get them to uh to aspen here which they kind of want to get to but they've got a cheaper route there so we'll see uh and green's prospecting off the deck. Puts us to three, which is red. Red's pushing north here, trying to get to Salt Lake City. And they're picking up the boulder lumber. They were considering, I think it was the Wrangley coal mine, because that's on their route. But then they said, wait a minute. I've got this lumber hooked up. Lumber's at top price over here in Denver. I should be selling that. You know, I, I, I should be using that stuff. I go to Denver, I go to Pueblo. There's no lumber getting there. Um, on to four is blue. Blue is kind of stalemated in terms of they don't have an easy way to move forward from where they are. Uh, they don't have any clear passenger routes available. They started cutting down this way, maybe the Santa Fe routes or something like that, or at least the mines down here. They just don't have a lot open and didn't see a lot of opportunities. They may not end up building that track because White laid this piece, which kind of blocks off their route here. And if White plays this, their whole track here is just useless. They can get everywhere else down that way. And they're prospecting, so unless they see something in that direction, it's very unlikely they're going to go fighting down there. Over on five, we've got Yellow, who's hooking up their Lake Valley Silver, pushing forward to try to get the passenger routes. White couldn't do so because it's a winter turn, and the, big, the important thing is to get one of these crosses. And both of them are going to be able to get across there, I guess, but there's going to have to be a showdown at some point. And the question is, kind of... Actually, it's not much of a question. They're going to probably fight over the uh, longer, cheaper route because there's not enough track for there to be real competition between these two routes. So whoever makes it, makes it, and that's going to be kind of valuable, but that only gets you as far as Pueblo. If they want to get up to Denver, they've got to cut this route. So there may be multiple routes there. Right now, though, the only card open is Pueblo to Santa Fe, and Denver to El Paso. The Denver to El Paso is obviously the more valuable route, though. So, I don't know. We'll see We'll see what happens. It's possible that uh, the fight may be over this track, in which case yellow, white should have played that, probably. Their loss if they don't. All right. And I guess that's the end, except for the track. Both yellow and white are fighting over the Cuba Copper, copper Mine. Um... It seems one of the more valuable things out there. At this point, White is probably considering buying another surveyor. Uh, 
because if they want to push their line and uh, you know defend the, the claims they have or get to Cuba or whatever they're gonna really need more than one surveyor. Tracks been laid, commodities delivered. Uh, a couple of interesting things. One over here at Cuba there was a competition. Well they tied so they're stuck there. They, neither one can buy it. Uh, they can remain there or leave on their next turn. They don't have to stay there and compete again. Other people can jump in as well. But, you know, it prevents any real opportunity for growth there. Uh, so the red player come to the point where he's more than breaking even. Now, he won his snowplow roll to Aspen, so he got that route as well. Without that, he wouldn't have quite done it. But... Uh, Whatever expenses he's spending on building track and everything are completely covered by his uh, uh, by his passenger routes, which is a nice feeling, but it's not where you need to be. The guy's completely loaded on passenger routes. He had nothing else. Now, he's making some money off the Boulder uh, lumber now as well, which is cool. And we see that went into Denver. Some coal into Pueblo from Blue. And white continue or yellow continuing to dump coal into El Paso. He couldn't make the deal on lumber. If he had Santa Fe hooked up, he probably would have, but uh, yeah, maybe not because yellow chose not to. Uh, yellow is waiting to boost it a little bit more, but uh, you know, it, it just didn't make sense to sell it at such a low price. So instead he hauls a bunch more coal. He's really got to get Santa Fe hooked up at some point uh, just to get that other market open. All right, well, we got the price changes. We had a few purchases, not much. Uh, Blue bought themselves a heavy train, I know that. Not quite sure. Oh, Green bought a heavy train. That was the weird one. Because Green doesn't have a lot to haul, but... They're seeing that if they the route they're taking is likely to be filled with coal. So if they don't get into the coal spirit of hauling a lot at once, uh, they're not going to be able to do terribly well. And of course, there's going to be an even heavier train available next turn. It's going to be the 72 train, which is as big as they get. And we're at the top of the snow plows, so really everybody should be planning out what they're doing at this point pretty well. We got a new Salt Lake City to Santa Fe route. Mm -hmm. Wonder if somebody can make that. Purple's closer, obviously. All right, and I've got the price changes, and that's about it. Prices were pretty much stable. Gold went down. The vagaries of gold, you know, it, it can always move slightly. Uh, copper went up, not quite at the top though, and silver also shot up. I'm going to have to see if people... Copper is probably not going to get sold, only one person sitting on any at this point. Uh, but gold, uh, but uh, silver... Um, nobody has it hooked up quite yet, but it's fairly easy for people to hook up. So, uh, we'll, see, we'll see whether or not that happens. We've got... Uh, Green's not going to be able to hook up their big load, though. So people might not be trying to haul silver as well. We'll see. Okay, so this has turned out to be an exciting turn, because of, at least the beginning, because of the purple incursion. With purple coming in and playing into things, well, not a lot of excitement is happening over on the prospector side, except that green doesn't get to play one because they needed all their remaining cash to make it to Hot Sulphur Springs before purple does. But here's what we're seeing. Uh, first of all, there's the white-yellow competition for this route. I looked at this route, and there's no way north from here. There's no way to easily break it. I mean, they could have swerved around, but now that's getting claimed. There's no way they're going to make it to Denver alone. But they can, one guy can make it to Pueblo alone. So somebody can grab that route, and then perhaps cut a deal with one of the other players. So, you know, right now, whoever makes it across here can cut a deal with Blue right away to make it to Denver. And they can do a joint um, uh, grab for that passenger run. That ends up giving Blue a big advantage for very little track. Uh, I don't know. 
but it definitely gives an advantage to the yellow or white player who manages to make this uh, crack through in addition to their other advantage. So we'll see how that's negotiated. There may be some exchange of money or property uh, to, you know, make it a fairer deal because otherwise blue is going to get a lot of money for very little track. Okay, and our other one is this purple-blue combination. This is blue's fault. They started this. They shot out of here. Now this is the route out for purple. This is their only way to Colorado Springs um, at this point. Can they get anywhere else? Well, they're not going to get to Pueblo no matter what. That's, that's pretty much guaranteed. Denver, they were heading up this way, but Green's cutting them off there, so they may just back out of that. I don't think they're going to go for that, but we've got competitions running both for here and also the Cuba Mine again, as well as the yellow-white one. So the results, well, yellow won their two races. They got this one and that one, and they've got improved uh, people on those, which would, they have to buy the track. The purple-blue fight, it didn't happen. Uh, they ended up tying. I took them off because I have no way of marking a tie on the board. Uh, supposedly, you're supposed to leave the two guys out there, but uh, leaving everybody out there is how I mark, hey, if yellow doesn't want this, white still gets an option at it. And that's just a mechanical problem in the game. There's no easy way, and especially with the clutter on the board, the way it is. All right. Uh, because I did side-by-side side over there, and I used to do that on the old board, but the old board was much bigger. Uh, I guess we could start with uh, people actually buying what they claimed. And, well, White couldn't do much. Uh, they ended up burning the Taos lumber mine and selling that lumber at maximum value at Santa Fe. That's about all they could do this turn. And they're kind of winding down. There isn't much left for them right now. They're going to have to find some new area to branch out to so that they can actually get some mines because there's nothing near them. Of course, they also have to build uh, out to White Oaks and haul the gold out of there. Probably store it in Elizabethtown where it's easier to get to. Uh, Blue, they haven't finished their turn yet. They've just rolled their production and paid a, a small amount of money. They haven't lost much this turn, not building any track. But they depleted the Leadville gold mine, and that finishes off Red's Denver to Leadville run, which means they're not going to collect the cash for that this turn. That's a big hit for them. That's been a good source of money, and it always is in that kind of mid-range of the game. But once it dries up, well, it's just gone, unlike most of the passenger routes. All right. Okay, and we're beginning to see the core commodities starting to sell at kind of a steadier and heavier rate. Denver getting both lumber and coal. And lumber from multiple people, green and red, uh, boulder and hot sulfur springs. The lumber will dry up. There's not a lot of lumber in the game, and there's not a lot. It, it tends to wear out more quickly than the coal does. But the coal, the constant flow of that, going into, uh, now for the first time, Salt Lake City with purple. Well, they reached buoy. They haven't gone to Schofield yet, but that's really close, and they can start hauling that at any point. I think the biggest effect that we're seeing, though, is we're going to see some deal-making happening. Blue and yellow can set up the route to Denver, El Paso to Denver, etc. They probably want to cut that deal. Purple is looking at cutting a deal with green. Green's been kind of falling behind. Well... The thing they want to make sure of is that red doesn't get it. Red's not doing that great, but they don't want red to steal that route. And the shortest route across is the purple-green one. Now the question here is, what's the timing? Uh, does purple want to do it, hold on to the cards they have as long as possible? Or do they want to score the big route in the conjunction? They're not able to break through. It's pretty clear at this point. So now the question is, who do they want to deal with? And they might be able to deal with multiple people on multiple cards or something like that. Or hold off on some of the cards until red is about ready to reach. It looks like green would lag if they tried to run for it. And no one else is really competing there. Uh, I'll handle the price changes. we got things are getting kind of confused here. Three, four, five, six, seven, one more showing up. Capitan. Somewhere down here. 
All right. So we move forward into the summer, I guess. And, well, silver capped, which means we're going to see people who have silver available hooked up, like Yellow, who hauled the Mogollon stuff down to Lake Valley. They got a ton of it there. The Aspen silver. We're going to see that all hit the market at once. And these people make their huge killings there. Uh, gold still hasn't reached the top. So everybody's a little reticent to spend their gold. Gold, if you had to do it, you do it. But it's just, uh, it, it's too valuable to turn around. Now you notice silver and copper actually sell for more than gold at their max. Silver's the better stuff. Gold kind of sucks in this game. Um, you still want it. It's better than, you know, the, the metals are very good. Um, we'll also see the coal market starting to kind of get a little lazy here. They don't like, uh, they don't like the amount of coal that's being dumped in certain areas. Denver is kind of slowing, El Paso. And as the game progresses and coal becomes more and more of the game, as the metal you know, the, the metal mines everybody grabs for and takes. The coal just kind of sits there and people pick it up and it runs later in the game. It, it's, not as, it's not as big a target because it's not as valuable. But it also doesn't die as easily. So that stuff just keeps producing and producing all game. And people start, you know, towards the end, that's almost all that people are hauling sometimes. Uh, that along with the passenger runs is what they're going to make their money off of. So... Um, you know, that really drops the prices. And that's the effect that probably kills coal the most because at $100 a pop for coal as a pretty constant thing, it's pretty nice. But when that drops down to 40 across the board or less because so much is being sold and people are hauling those 72 trains, well, it's barely worth producing anymore. It's really not making a lot of money. And unless you can convince everyone else using your market to kind of uh, cooperate in, you know, bilking the customers, um, you're not going to really be able to make good cash off of it. If somebody's going to be selling, well, yeah, I might as well. All right, this goes up.